There was a comment on yesterday's video that a man put up that I thought was interesting, challenging, and I just wanted to address this particular comment because it, it is the core of Christianity. I mean, the very core. Stop saying, this is the comment, stop saying a man, need, a man needs to fall in love with Jesus Christ. I could never fall in love with a man. I am a man. I may honor and respect a man for his sacrifice and see the Lord God in his sacrifice and his passion. But with all the damage of the people in the church and with all the sexual depravity by the clergy, stop saying this. Falling in love for 99% of humans is a sexual thing. As a straight man, when somebody talks about falling in love with a man, it makes me sick. Uh, you do not know how much damage a man uh, to a man when you say this. Maybe it, it will adjust your wording. Jesus wants men, not lovers. Jesus wants men, that, not lovers. Now, I, when I read this, I needed to unpack it a little bit. In, uh, in when we're interpreting biblical texts there's two there's a word that you need to understand we need to understand it's called exegesis so there's exegesis to lead out or you also have the other term asegesis asegesis to pull in so the contrary one is to pull out and the other is to pull in when when we studied when i studied biblical texts this core of christianity because um uh, St. Paul says that God is love, agape. You know, we, we, we went through all of the different uh, definitions of love in the Greek world. And, you know, and St. Paul hones in, goes into agape, right? It is the, the highest form of love. So you have eros and agape in English and sadly in the English speaking world, you know, and in the modern world, love the, the the whole term of love has been completely destroyed it, it, you know in my estimation especially in the english speaking world it has been sadly banalized to you know we speak of god's love and somebody loves somebody you know that they'll use for one day and get rid of the next you know it, it's 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 sad the situation we're in but it is it is the core of our faith it is the core of our faith. The, over the last century, you know, we've, we have had such bad exegesis. You know, what, we're, what a priest or somebody that's explained the sacred scripture should be doing is leading you out to meet Christ. Leading you, opening, cracking, opening sacred scripture to allow you to contemplate God so that you love him. So that you experience the agape of God. This, this is, um, and it's hard to put into words. It's hard to put into words because it's something that I experienced when I was 18. And so, and what happened after my experience at 18, I had layered up, or some, those that, that, that were helping me, all good men. I'm not saying I'm not here to criticize because I do think that God is allowing this in the church to educate us, to form us. You know, God is allowing you know, people look at the crisis as something completely negative and uh, in the church. And I see it as God's purifying love for the church. You know, you you we, we are so often, so often. We have bad, we have a said Jesus, not ex said Jesus. We have a said, where people are drawing people to their idea of God. Um, Valentin Tomberg, he speaks about this in one of his paragraphs. You know, sometimes we, we draw people to an idea of God that is so far removed that he doesn't impact our life. We put him up there. And so our idea of God is admiration. Exactly what this man is saying. I can admire. You know, uh, I can admire somebody. Uh, I can honor. I may honor and respect a man for a sacrifice. We're not called to honor and respect Christ for a sacrifice. We are called to love him. Because that love. Of God. We are called not only to to engage with it 
we are be, we are called to become it. We are called to become that love, to become what we eat in the in the sacrifice of the mass, the holy sacrifice, of the mass when we, when we receive the Eucharist. We are called to become that which we eat. I, I think, sadly, for humanity, we're such poor reflections on this love. I feel, I feel it's awful for me to be blogging and I say to our Lord, Lord, I am so useless at this. And he says, no, you just do this. You just do the possible. You're fine. Just explain it as you're explaining it. Just explain this love. Just explain this encounter. Do it. Just do, do it. And you're there saying, well, you've really picked the the the, the 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 poorest thing but i suppose we're in a sense we're called to a little bit to be humble you know to let go of our egos where for me it is to be viewed as a fool but in order to 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 draw you into that encounter with christ because the last thing i need you to do is to follow me robert nugent i don't need i have to be careful that i don't become an ace an a uh, if you understand, the opposite of exeges, somebody that's drawing people into their idea of God. And you see this, you see this in the lives of so many priests that haven't been formed. You know, you see such bad uh, understanding of God that they are drawing them to themselves. You know, they're drawing them to themselves. Now, I can, and people can see this certain priests who say well such and such never happened and i don't believe in this and i don't believe in that and and they make their own fan base they make their own fan base around themselves they make their own fan base in the media they get you know the and whereas we're called the mission our mission is called to lead people to christ the last thing i need is followers the the the, the, the and this is the sad thing. Don't understand God as an ideology. Don't understand him as an ideology. Understand him as a real encounter of love. A real encounter of agape. Study the different understandings of what St. Paul is talking about this. Because St. Paul, like, as a man, when you read Corinthians and you read his writings, yeah, this is deep this is deep this is deep you're you're like how could a man have written this how could he write this you know he comes from killing jews <laughs> you know when you think about it where saint paul comes from to killing jews to talking about god as love you know i think it is it 1 corinthians 13 13 um but I mean, when you when you when you listen to Saint Paul's experience of God, you're there. Wow, this is truly profound, and it's a type of love that is that is incredible. There's a couple in Mayo, um, Mick and Carmel. They took over Jim Brown's. Um, they took over Jim Brown's chapel, and one day the two of them were standing up at the lectionary in in Jim Brown's chapel, giving a talk on on their experience of Christ, and both of them said, and and it was Mick that says the husband said he says, "There's so we have a we have a third person in our marriage, we have fallen in love with it," and they were talking about their experience of Christ, and I thought, wow, you really have this beautiful understanding of God's love. You know, because divine love knits together family. It should, you know, it should be, he should be a teacher for us. Bring peace, you know, draw our relationships together. And it just, it's just, I just found it amazing. Uh, his, when the, the couple were talking about their experience of Christ. And you could go on and on and on. But I would just encourage people. I would encourage people to engage with this mystery. To go into the mystery of God's love. You know. Because. This transformation you need in your life. We need this transformation when we're dealing with problems. When we're dealing with situations. When we're dealing with suffering. You know we will all die. St. Joseph died. 
the people around, the, the people that followed Christ, they all died. But in the midst of the suffering and the trials, there is this encounter. It's this rock, you know. Um, if you go back to the Gospels, I think there's this amazing, well, it's not, I don't think there's, there is this amazing scene of uh, Christ at, t- talking to St. Peter after the resurrection uh, on the Sea of Galilee, you know, and he asking them, he asking him three times, do you love me? And uh, we all remember that scene and you can depict that scene and you can understand that scene after St. Peter had denied Christ three times. You know, who who does this um, after Christ and Christ had predicted he would do it. So you have uh, uh, three sets. You have uh, you have the Christ saying to St. Peter, you'll deny me three times. St. Peter denying him three times and Christ coming back to saying, do you love me three times? It's, uh, you know, this this, this, uh, incredible part of the of the Gospels. In the writings of Maria Valtorta, and this is where I'm going to tie it back into. uh, Our Lord talks about this bad exegesis that we have that has happened. We have not been leading souls out to encounter him. Why? Because a lot of priests and a lot of leaders in the faith haven't had that encounter with Christ. So they can't draw from something that they've encountered to say, well, this is something I, I want you to go and encounter it. I want you to have the fullness of it. I don't want, I don't want to be guarding this truth from you. <laughs> no, I want you to encounter it. I want you to go encounter this love of God. You experience him in prayer. You know, a good spiritual leader will lead somebody in prayer to encounter the same experience they've encountered. So you're not put up, the, the leader isn't putting themselves up here so, so, so high. Or, you know, because this is the, this sadly is the temptation. This is the, the deformation that can happen is we lead people to an ideology, an idea of Christ and not to Christ. You know, Deus caritas est, God is love. God is love. And love wants to transform you. The transformation to such an extent you become what you contemplate. You become what you eat. You act as Christ acted. This is the yeast that Christ wants to bring into the world. That we act like him. And when the church is weak, at different periods in the church, we have divine intervention. We had it during the early part, uh, the middle part of the church, we, you know, with, with all of the Eucharistic adoration, the mystics that promoted that. We had it with during the Jansenist movement. We have the Sacred Heart, you know, promoted by the Jesuits at the time, uh, Claude de Colombier. We have it in in the last century with. Sister Faustina, the Divine Mercy. And we have it in the writings of Maria Valtorta. A gift from heaven to allow us to contemplate Christ who became flesh. Verbum caro factum est. The word became flesh. The word became man. And this man died for us. To show us. How, how would he make us understand what love is? Unless we contemplated how he loved. Radically. Totally. I think I heard a Hindu say, I can respect what Christ said on the cross. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Even that tugged at the at the sensibilities of of those in other religions. The cross is the greatest act of love. And we we are called to engage our heart into that reality of love. 
And unless you do that, you will not know God. And he can transform you. We are called to engage in that reality. Everything in the church, everything that we do. And Jean Curie says this. He's quoting um, Pope Benedict. But everything, the sacraments, our liturgies, everything is to point us towards that transformational encounter that we need to have. And that's what the writings of Maria Valtorta are doing people read them is to show how God became flesh to teach us you know divine love for dummies is what the Bible is is what the gospel is because sometimes we are so stupid we don't understand it you know because the the, the Israel of the day had had deformed religion into a set of rigid rules and Christ comes along and says, oh, no, okay, yeah, don't commit adultery. But if you look at a woman with um, lust in your heart, do you understand? It is fascinating if you meditate. Fascinating, fascinating. But it is the core of our faith. And a good spiritual leader will always lead you to Christ, should lead you to Christ. And again, I speak from experience here. In the sense that I've seen, you see, we can see deformations that that happen at the church at different times. And God allows them. God allows them to teach. So that we can look back. You know, and this is what is happening in the church at this moment in time. Everything. You know, and Pope Francis speaks about this. I always, when I listen to him, I said, he has, he has, he is right. <laughs> he is right. Be careful of the ideologies. The ideologies of Christ. You know, they happened in the past. You know, Jansenism and so forth. They happened in the past. They can happen now and they can happen in the future. So you have to be on guard. What is the ideology that we could be inventing? of, Or are we leading people to Christ? To union with him? You know, it's such a core part of our faith. Anyway. 17 minutes didn't think I'd go on that long <laughs> I'm just scratching a tiny bit of the searches surface but I do encourage people you now don't be listening just to me Robert Nugent you go read the lives of the saints you go there's there's tons of experts far greater than this and if you look at Saint John of the Cross one of the great doctors of the church Saint, Saint Teresa of Avila Saint, Saint Teresa of Lisieux they have a great capacity to understand this topic. And Jean Curie, School of Mary, he's been blogging about, he's been explaining uh, St. John of the Cross. In, in uh, There's a playlist on his channel, School of Mary, or you can go to his website, schoolofmary.org, and he's doing, you know, talking about this. You know, nourish yourself. Come on, come on. Um, because it is the most beautiful encounter. The encounter with God is an encounter of love. There exists no other encounter with God. There exists no other relationship with God. Doesn't exist. Will never exist. We are not called to admire, respect God. We are called to love him. Do you know? It is the only relationship that God wants to have with you. Because you become what he is. Anyway, God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.